I am Leo Laporte, the tech guy, and we go back to the phones with Pete in San Diego. Hello, Pete. Hi, Leo. Thanks. I got myself in a terrible mess. Oh, I... no. What's the matter? <laughs> well, I, my problem is I'm kind of like an un. I'm your unfunded, unfunded mini me. In other words, I, <laughs> I, think I don't have any way to pay for it. But anyway, you know why I'm me? Because I was, I was, I wanted to have everything. I wanted to try all this stuff, and I couldn't. I who can afford it, right? And I made a vow to myself. I said, I'm going to get in this. I'm going to become a tech journalist so I can get the latest and greatest, and I can stay up and like. Because I love this stuff. This was, by the way, back in 19. I want to say 1980, 1981, and I started writing for magazines like Byte and InfoWorld, and uh, because I could get free software for review, right? And yeah. uh, and then you see what happens uh, after 30 or 40 years. Pretty soon, you you can't. You're buried. <laughs> so, well, you also have accumulated enough funds to be able to do it. <laughs> right, and you know what? I'm pr people sometimes say, "Oh, you're showing off. You buy all this stuff." But that's not showing off. It's because I don't want to be beholden to the companies. I want to oh, buy right. this stuff so I can review it. There's a couple of benefits to that. One is the company doesn't get to send me a special review unit or harass me until I say nice things about them. They don't even know I have it. But the other is I feel your pain. I'm spending my money. When I look at an iPad Pro and I think, God, I spent a thousand bucks on that. There's no way I'm going to give that a good review. I'm going to say, you know, it's fine for what it is, but is it worth a thousand bucks? Because I feel it. So that's why I, I use my own money. But Pete, you're using your own money. You have my deepest sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, as part of that, over the years, I've gone from Windows, the whole, I go the whole hog, the whole platform. And then I, my son started working for Apple, so I thought, well, let me go with Apple. So I bought everything Apple, and I went on their whole platform. And then I re realized the limitations. So Tim Cook on. thanks you, by the way. What's that? Tim Cook and the stockholders of Apple thank you. <laughs> it's people like you that have made it the most valuable company in the world. Yeah, and, but anyway, I so now I'm back on Android, and over the years, this is my the heart of my question. It's not really technical; it's more platform oriented. And I would had an IT career for many years, and I learned to go with the vendor, not the product, because the product right. can always change. Very good point. Yeah, but but the thing is, with the vendors now, they're always going to catch up with each other. So I don't know. Here's my situation: I have music. I bought. I have a bunch of CDs that aren't ripped. Uh, I have uh, a, most of the music is was purchased through Amazon and is still out there online. I have an yeah. Amazon Echo, which I love. Yeah, uh, and it's a great way to listen to music. Um, I have a few things on Google Play. I also have Google Fi for my phone, so that would make it an, <laughs> an option to listen to music. Well, you really you buy in when you buy in, you go all in. I did. It. I like I, it. I, <laughs> you are a mini me, or maybe you're a mi mac micro macro me. I don't know. Well, I, I'm a wannabe <laughs> mini me too, but uh, I haven't quite made it there yet. Because you well, can yourself, you can you can punch your way out of the wet bag. I can't. <laughs> we're t we're tech fans. That's what we are. And uh, the problem with being a tech fan is it, it's it's a costly and sometimes frustrating habit. But anyway, we enjoy it anyway. Yeah, right? it's a great hobby. It's fun, but then I, I could have, be worse. You could own a sailboat. It could be worse. Trust me, there are worse, more expensive hobbies in the world. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. And uh, my, I, during my Apple foray, I bought the entire Beatles collection. Ah, you know, was hundred and me too. Me too. Yeah, because yeah. they are. I'm sorry, I just swallowed my. <laughs> Excuse me. They are. They are the only company that sells digital Beatles, right? Right. So I you have, have to it. buy that from a Apple. So then I've got a bunch of CDs. Uh, like I said, I've got some music on uh, some MP3s on OneDrive. So here's the sixty-four thousand dollar question. Oh man, you spread what it would every, you everywhere. But is there any way I can consolidate that on one? Yes. I've heard you talk about this over the years. Yes. But I just tends to comprehend it when you're saying it. No, let's do this. Macro, what yeah. would you? Where could I put everything? And I'm probably going to want to go either the Amazon Echo or Google all the way. Okay. This is this is a no-brainer because it was more of a problem when copy protection was still being used. Because if you had copy protection, you bought something on iTunes, you had to play it on iTunes. That's gone, right? Okay. So you have no copy protection on anything you've purchased online, the Beatles and all of that stuff. Those are just 
kind of standard in the case of Apple AAC files. Anything can play those. The CDs, eventually you're going to want to rip them. Uh, my suggestion is when you rip them, that is copy them to a hard drive, you rip them in a format called FLAC. You may be tempted to save hard drive space and use MP3 or AAC or some lossy compression, but you're going to lose data by doing that. If you use FLAC, it doesn't compress as small. It only gets to about half the original size, but you lose no bits. So a FLAC copy of Paul Simon's Graceland is going to be, you could burn that to a CD and it would be exactly identical to the original. Which is one of my favorite CDs, by the way. I love that. I chose a good one. So, in fact, when I met Paul Simon, had dinner with him, and I just, I went, I'm not worthy. You, that is the greatest album of all time. I love it. And he had some great stories about it. Uh, oh, it it yeah. is really worth it. And, you know, it's a good test because it's beautifully recorded. Mm -hmm. He gave credit to the sound engineer, by the way. He said that guy was a genius because they recorded it all over the world. But it's a good test of your sound system. So, when you, when you rip those, don't rip them in some format that's going to degrade it. Rip it into flack. You, hard drive space is cheap. Uh, so that's advice number one. Now, number two, you're going to have this on a hard drive. Make a copy of that hard drive. Keep a good local copy, a backup. But you can also, with either Amazon or Google or Apple, those are the three companies that do this, upload your existing collection to their servers. The CDs or? <laughs> no, the RIPs. Okay. So e even RIP, even the files from Apple and everything can be uploaded to uh, the other yeah, one. Yeah, because, uh, as uh, yes, exactly. Uh, now, the FLACs, you might have to convert and make an MP3 of those because they want MP3s yeah. or AACs, but you're going to keep the FLAC for your archival purposes. You're gonna, it's right. easy to convert to MP3 as a secondary format. That's what will be stored on Amazon or Google or Apple's servers. For Apple, you have to pay for iTunes Match. That's 25 bucks a year. Amazon, you have to pay something comparable to have more than, I can't remember what their limit is. Uh, Google, I think, is now some 50,000 songs. They keep increasing the limit. <clears throat> How big is your collection, would you guess? Oh, uh, it's pro no more than probably 50 or 70 CDs. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll get all of that. Any of them, you'll get it all for free, except Apple. You have to pay no matter what. <clears throat> now you have a copy in the cloud, which means you can stream it on any device. If you've uploaded it to Amazon, you can stream it on your Echo. Now, the Echo speakers aren't great, so that's maybe not, you know, a full fidelity way to do it but you can but my hearing is such that I <laughs> you don't care then the, then and so th that's when you're going to have to this this is how you're going to decide which of those services so those are the three you're choosing from apple google or amazon all three allow you to put not only you know the the 30 million songs they offer via streaming but everything you bought and let's use the beatles because that's the big one no you know nobody streams beatles music <clears throat> so if you want to hear your beatles songs i do too that means you're going to have to pick one of those three services. You're going to pay 25 bucks a year to uh, Apple, or you're going to use Amazon or Google, and you're going to upload those songs to their servers. Now, when you stream, it includes the full Beatles collection, everything you own, plus every other record you uploaded, whether they have it on their streaming service or not. Okay? <clears throat> now, why would you choose one or the other? Well, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, as you well know, best to go with iTunes. It's not my first choice. You heard our last caller, Chris. Right. Nightmare. <clears throat> if you really want to use the Echo, you got to use Amazon. If you had Sonos or you used a lot of Android, Google would be a good choice. Uh, Google and Amazon both... Actually, Amazon does not have the same size streamings collection. It's Amazon Prime collection. It's actually fairly small. So yeah, if, it is. Not much on there. I no, it. it's just a few million. So if you want the full collection of streaming so that the next time Adele comes out with an album, you can listen to it, or someday when her album goes on streaming, and you want your Beatles, it seems like we've narrowed it down. Google. Google Play Music. Ten bucks a month. It's what I use. I also use Spotify, but I love Google Play Music. Uh, and it's going to give you all those features. You won't get the echo. That's the only thing. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy.